We're working with wild ocelots in Texas, and there's only about 60 to 100 of them left in the wild, so not very many cats left. And occasionally these cats get hit by automobiles and they get killed. And normally once they die, that's the end of their genetic contribution. But in this case, we're actually able to preserve some of the genetic um, components of this particular male ocelot that was hit by a car last May in the middle of the night, 11 o'clock at night. Someone um, saw the animal on the side of the road and called the biologist for the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service who went to pick up the, the dead animal. And because we were working with her on this project to conserve Texas ocelots, she knew that if she could get the, the male's um, gametes to us quickly, that we had a chance to preserve them and possibly use them to make offspring later on. So we received the, the, the male's testes here at 36 hours after death. And we received those, those, those tissues quickly enough that we were able to rescue a tremendous amount of semen from this male. Now, because we've collected and frozen his semen after death, he has a chance to be a father again. So we have a project coming up um, working at the Albuquerque Zoo, the ABQ Biopark, where the goal is to artificially inseminate one of the ocelots there under human care and produce offspring with Texas ocelot sperm. And this is the first time this has ever been done, taking semen from a wild ocelot, freezing it, and being, using it to produce an offspring within a zoo. And this is really important for a couple of reasons. First, it gets to the genetics of that male into our zoo population. So we can increase the gene diversity of the ocelots that we manage within zoos by producing offspring with his sperm. But the other thing that it does is it demonstrates that we can use frozen semen from wild males to produce offspring. And that's really important moving forward in trying to manage and conserve these wild ocelot populations. This is right in our ballpark. We've been working with ocelots here for about 25 years. And one of the main focuses of what we've done is develop artificial insemination as a way to manage the ocelots that we have in zoos. There aren't any more ocelots coming from the wild. It's pretty much the ocelots that we have now are descendants of ocelots that came into zoos 30 years ago. So we haven't been able to introduce new genetics into that population for a very long time. So this would be the first time in probably three decades that we've been able to introduce basically a new ocelot into the zoo population.